Hello everyone, A.L. Levy here with Nail the Mix. You are in Academy and I'm going to unbox what we've got on for April 2019's Nail the Mix, which I'm very proud to say is Lake Effect Kid by Fallout Boy, which was originally produced and mixed by Sean O'Keefe. And Sean O'Keefe is going to be showing us how to mix this song. And I'm going to walk through and show you what tracks there are and what it consists of. So before I go any further, I'll just show you that there are no plugins. Some very basic leveling. And quite a few tracks. Decent amount of drums. <laughs> You're gonna love this. A cowbell, new percussion, bass. We've got a DI and looks like uh, two microphones, a 47 and an RE20 on a bass cab. A whole lot of guitars. A whole lot more guitars. Pianos, Rhodes, <laughs> organs, and a ton of vocals, which is great because they have a fantastic singer. And I'll just let you hear kind of what it sounds like, you know, without anything going on, <laughs> plug-in wise, mix wise, processing wise. But uh, just keep in mind that, you know, there's no way this is going to sound finished because this is a super dense song. Fall Out Boy is one of those bands that really, really pushed and pushes the boundaries of its genre. They have all kinds of interesting instrumentation, interesting arrangements, and they just, they're outside the box. They really, really took things further. So here goes. I'll play from the beginning. All right, you get the idea. Let's dig in. Start with drums. First things first. Just gonna solo the kit and listen to what we got. Solid. All right, so we've got a kick in mic and a kick out mic. Let's get a little bit more low end out of that. I'll turn it up just a little. I was just making sure that they were in phase, so I wasn't ruining anything. Good hard kick. Oh, one thing you should know, too, is that this whole thing was done in one day. It's a very rough and tough session, which I think is really, really cool because lots of what we get on now, the mix, is you know stuff that's painstakingly done, but this is just in and out, you know, in and out rock and roll style. And this band still slams and it's still a great mix and still a great recording and it just goes to show that speed sometimes works like sometimes you don't need to spend forever on things sometimes throw and go is the way to go add some overheads
hi hat is very important in this song. Yeah, this drummer is on the hat a lot. So, you know, when you mix it, you're going to want to make sure that you emphasize that correctly without going overboard because hats are one of those instruments that you really can overdo. Toms are good. It looks like we got a rack tom and a floor tom. And I love that these toms are just wide open sounding. You know, in metal, we're used to having toms that are, you know, muted or short, which makes sense because they're trying to cut through a wall of noise. Th these are more wide open. I like that. And uh, looks like Sean was kind enough to pre-cut these for us. Listen to the close rooms. Nice. It's a very nice room, very smooth. Far room. Oh, you can do a lot with that. got a room center as well. And a room low. I'm guessing by room low that means that the microphone is literally close to the ground. And the reason that people do that is so that they can get more of the kick and more of the shells with less of the cymbals overtaking everything because you know, when you want to heavily compress your rooms, one of the things you have to contend with are cymbals that are just overbearing. And, you know, the higher up your microphones are, the more cymbals you get. So it's a common practice to have low a low set of rooms for the purpose of messing up in the best possible way. And then we got a mono kit. All right, I want to hear all the rooms together. All right, you hear how big that sounds? Once again, this is one. Of, this is a rock and roll recording. Um, a lot of this drum tone, if not most of it, is going to come out of a very good and wise and uh, effective use of these rooms. Just listen to how much character is in these room mics. Everything you could want is in those rooms. And uh, <laughs> let's hear it with some cowbell. If that's not blaring loud in your mixes, I don't know what to say but we probably can't be friends. This is the first time. This is a nail the mix first, actually, <laughs> getting a cowbell. And I love that it's here. All right, let's hear what, what's up with these uh, tambourines.
see, you know, what's funny is I, w- I was, this is how a, a very small detail, but it goes to show how this band does the unexpected, even uh, with the small details. And hey, great songs, great mixes, great productions are, you know, the cumulative effect of thousands of little decisions. And here's one. I was fully expecting that when I played the tambourine right now, it would be over the hi-hat parts. Over that stuff. That's totally what I was expecting. I was not expecting it to be over where he's riding the crashes. But it, it makes so much sense. It gives it so much motion. And you know what's really funny about that is that, the, the, you know, this is not a metal song, not a metal band, but the pattern that it's playing right there is something you would expect to hear double bass doing in a metal song, which just gives it motion and forward drive, which is really cool. And I know that this drummer likes metal because I saw a video of him playing with Behemoth. So I wouldn't be surprised. See, you can imagine that if those tambourines were kick drums, this would be metal. Love it. All right, let's see what's going on with the bass. So we got, like I said, a DI and two microphones on a cabinet, I believe. Let's see. That is a great sounding DI. And I love that cabinet. And what's cool about this is, you know, we're used to adding grit to bass. That's part of what helps it drive a heavy guitar tone, drive a heavier song. But, you know, you don't want to go too far. You don't want to make this as dirty as you would in metal. But that's already kind of provided for you here a good amount of grit out of the cabinet. This is a great bass tone. hear how that works with the drums and the uh, essential tambourine. Oh, we're missing some drums. What do you know? Even though it's a basic bass line, there's even a hook in the bass. Like the way that it hits those high notes is a hook within just a simple bass line. And that's one thing that I really like about this band is everything they do is really damn catchy. Down to the little, little details. All right, what do we got going on with guitars? Nice. What is this? Oh, nice. All 
I'm just clip gaining these a little because they're pretty quiet. I want to be able to hear them. And that's another thing. This is just a cool chord progression. This band has great harmonic content, which you need great chord progressions to build great melodies off of. One of the things they do best is have great melodies. The, the vocalist, Patrick Stump, has some of the best melodies in the game. But without the right harmonic structure, it, the, the stage would not be set for great melodies. And just, just listen to this chord progression. It's really nice. And I'll add the bass in there too, just so you get some motion. Let's hear that with some drums, too. You know, what's funny is... Okay, so that's a simple riff, right? Or you think it's simple. I mean, you could write it down on paper and it would appear simple. But try listening to some run-of-the-mill local band playing that riff and then tell me that it's that simple it's like one of those things kind of like when you hear acdc playing uh back in black and it's like all right that that's some simple stuff i mean it's cool but it's simple then you hear a local band try to cover it and it's like well maybe it's not that simple um i mean Maybe it's it's simple, but it's not easy. And there's something about playing in a pocket and locking in that, you know, it's the difference between those who can and those who can't. It just moves like a big rock band does. What a surprise, it's a big rock band. got some lead guitars as well I believe some octaves which I love I love octaves whether it's Fall Out Boy or Marty Friedman that's right I love octaves hang on a second I'm just going to group the volumes. Sorry about that. I'm grouping the volumes so I can go ahead and uh, turn these up together because they're going to be real soft. Okay, so, remember how I said that that was kind of metal? Um, 
<laughs> Imagine if this was a, a metal song and these were double kicks. Here, I'll turn on the rest of the drums, and it totally is a metal song once you remove, you know, once you remove the these chords. Anyways, we'll keep going. I love how how the arrangement works. I love how it goes from this part with the crash and the tambourines and the octave guitars and the heavy guitars and it's all in. And then we go to the hi-hat part with uh, the softer guitars and the vocals come in, it's just the verse. But what I like about it is how the mo it keeps the momentum going. Because I mean, this is a pretty high momentum beginning. And yes, it goes to a lower dynamic for the verse. But what's cool is that even though this tambourine that's just, uh, you know, playing the double bass part stops, the hi-hat picks it up, which is part of why the motion, the momentum keeps going. See, so even though it's softer, it, it doesn't really miss a beat. It, it keeps moving. All right, let's listen to these uh, keyboard instruments. We've got pianos right here. Roads. Tasty organ <laughs> hell yeah I'm gonna turn it up a little piano I mean Organs are just one of the coolest instruments, whether <laughs> whether they're this style or a pipe organ. And it's an instrument that blends in rock and metal very, very well. There's just so much stuff keeping that momentum going, keeping it interesting, laying the the bed basically for uh, Mr. Patrick to sing over. Let's see what we got. So we've got the lead vocal. Sometimes when I'm in heaven, and I get forgetful of the earth. And of course, it sounds great. So the lead and the double. Let's see what this is. Got a pocket full of dilly. Nice. And four harmonies. Got a pocket full of dilly. Opium did not forget my head at the death and caught. God, that's tasty. This guy knows what he's doing. I love his voice. Let's hear this chorus. Boomerang my head back to the city I grew up in. 
again and again forever a lake effect chill god that's good forget your night time some love on the goonie with the squeaky wheel all right so you know what i think here you know i've been adjusting the clip gain on lots of these tracks just for the purpose of this unboxing but i actually think that the because they had to do this very very quickly yeah you know, like i said they did it in one day uh there there's no time for fucking around i think that these are recorded the levels that they're somewhat supposed to be at relative to each other uh and maybe not 100 percent exactly like this but it just shows you kind of a relative level of where the harmony should be in relation to the main vocals and the reason that i think that this is true is because i've heard the main i've heard the one that was actually released where the harmonies in the chorus are kind of this loud compared to the lead vocal so take that for what it's worth when you're doing your own version I well, pre-chorus, but you get what I'm saying. Bring my head back to the city I grew up in. Again and again, forever a lake effect chill. What a recognizable voice. Boomerang my head back to the city I grew up in. Again and again, forever a lake effect chill. Just, I'm just putting these organs in just to give you a little bit of uh, accompaniment. How about that? Yeah, and the, lastly, this song is going to get stuck in your head because I've heard it a bunch since it's on Nail the Mix right now. It is infectious. That chorus will just stick with you, kind of like a bunch more of their songs. So I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing of Lake Effect Kid by none other than Fall Out Boy, which is being mixed by the one and only Sean O'Keefe on Nail the Mix this month, which is uh, April 2019. If you want to, uh, you know, if you want your shot at mixing this, just uh, click the link below or go to nailthemix.com slash fallout boy. Happy mixing.